Welcome to part 9 of the Teardown scripting tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to use sprites, sound effects, and particles. Let's start with sprites. They're just flat images that can be placed in the world through scripting. In the game, they are primarily used for overlay graphics, but the modding community has found creative ways to use them for lightning strikes, balloons, and much more. To put a sprite on the screen, you must first load it from disk, which is usually done from the init function. The sprite is just a plain JPEG or a PNG image, and you can put it anywhere in the mod folder. Load sprite returns a handle that can be used with the draw sprite function. When drawing the sprite, you provide a transform along with size, color, and a few rendering options. Note that draw sprite should be called from tick and not the draw callback. Playing sounds is a bit similar to sprites in that you must first load them from disk. Note that the only supported file format is augvorbis, which can be exported by most audio editing tools. Sounds played this way will be positioned in the world and affected by the acoustics simulation. If you want to play clean sounds that aren't part of the world, for instance for a menu, there is the UI sound function for that. If you load a sound where the file name ends in 0.og, the game will automatically look for similarly named files with an increasing number and choose one at random every time you play it. This is an easy way to create variation in the sound effects and used extensively throughout the game. In addition to load sound and play sound, there are similar functions for playing looping sounds and music. Let's add a particle effect that goes with the explosion sound. To emit particles, you first need to set up a particle state. Call particle reset to set up the default state. It uses the first particle in the atlas, which happens to be a smoke particle, so we don't need to change that. To set the size of the particle, we call particle radius. Most properties can be animated, and the simplest way to do that is to provide two values to the function instead of one. In this case, the particle will spawn at 0.3 meters in radius and grow to one meter towards the end of its lifetime. Have a look in the API documentation for more intricate ways of animating properties. Once we've set up a state, we use spawn particle to release a particle into the world. The first argument is position, the second is velocity, and the last one is particle lifetime. A single particle isn't very interesting, so let's spawn 100 of them instead. Note that since we don't change the particle state in the loop, all particles will get the exact same appearance. It looks rather dull because all particles follow the exact same trajectory. To add some randomness, I created a helper function to return a random value within a range. We'll use that to spawn each particle with a slightly different velocity. To make it nicer, we can also add an animated color so that the particles start as brown and fade out to white. We'll also add gravity and finally some randomness to the particle lifetime. By combining several particle types and behaviors, we can create a lot of different special effects. The particle API in Teardown supports collisions with the environment and even fluid dynamics simulation for a realistic smoke behavior. As always, you can check out the API documentation for details. In the next episode, we'll wrap up this series with a couple of advanced topics for the more experienced modders.